to my flugelhorn practice. Today I'm practicing the love of my life. You might notice some difference in the sound today or you might not. Um, just depends on how easy it is to figure it out by the end of the day today. Um, I am working on it, <laughs> working on something new. Um, and if it doesn't work out, if I find it too complicated at this moment, I'll just do what I've been doing. That should be okay but I'd really like to be able to um, have good sound quality in my videos. Something I wanted to talk to you about is this instrument, this beautiful, wonderful slice of music heaven, which is the flugelhorn to me. I noticed when I looked in my analytics that out of all of the search terms that people use to find my videos or to people click on, the most common one besides Frank James' song is flugelhorn, and I thought that was really interesting because I haven't really played the flugelhorn on this channel in a little while, and um, that's silly. <laughs> that's very silly because I love this instrument and I feel so connected to it. Around July, I was practicing flugelhorn and trumpet alternatively, like I was just doing each one every other day. And um, I think it's time to get back into doing that, especially now that I've been practicing more and allowing myself this time. I think that now is the time to really dig deep into my relationship with this instrument, this really special instrument, uh, which is not the same as a trumpet. It's totally different. And the mouthpiece is like totally different, right? Even just buzzing the mouthpiece by itself was a totally different experience for me. It takes so much energy to keep the sound going on this little tiny mouthpiece. I mean, I think the lovely thing about this is that so much of the horn does the work for you, but really, you, you have to have the foundation to make it sound like how it should sound. It's time to practice the flugelhorn again, and it's time to sound very pretty, so let's practice some more. tell a little story about how I got to know the flugelhorn and how how the flugelhorn fell so angelically into my life. I mean I've always loved the sound of it so ever since I saw it in um, jazz band, ever since I saw one of my high school peers play it, I thought wow that's such a pretty instrument. And I played a flugelhorn in my college jazz band when I played and I thought that was fun. Um, but 
quite honestly, I really didn't take that opportunity and run with it when I had the chance because we had these beautiful four valve Getsons, a um, matching set of them that we played in our jazz orchestra. And it was so lovely and I just like didn't ever play it outside of rehearsal. When I graduated, I was still in the British brass band um, that we had up in my college town. I was playing Repiano cornet. At one time, the normal flugelhorn player was not going to be at the rehearsal. It happened to be like kind of a performance type rehearsal. Someone else in the band let me borrow their also gets in lovely rose satin finish flugelhorn. And there was this piece that came up and I, I, it said solo on it. It was some kind of like, you know, it's an English folk song and I don't remember what the song was exactly, but I'll always remember the melody because the music said solo and I assumed at least there would be like maybe some chords or something underneath, but he started going and I played and it was like, the music just came out of me. It didn't, I didn't think about it. It just pulled itself out of my being. <laughs> If you've played multiple instruments, you might have th had this experience where, yeah, you played an instrument and it took a little bit of effort to sound good, but you figured out how to like maneuver yourself in a way that fits the instrument. But in this case, when I played the flugelhorn for the first time playing that solo, it was like the instrument found me. <laughs> That's sounding so very cliche. But it's the truth, it's really what happened, and I fell in love that day. And of course, after that year, I left town and I didn't play any trumpet or flugelhorn for like three years, except on my own, because I wasn't in any groups playing brass. You know, two years ago is when I started playing, I finally found a group that I could play brass in, and actually two groups, <laughs> two groups in which I could play trumpet and both of them required a flugelhorn. That is when I got my binge and I love it. I took a big risk because, you know, it's an older horn and I just, I didn't play it before I bought it. I just listened to someone else playing it and I thought it was beautiful. It had this like dark smoky sound that also I, I felt like I could uh, navigate really beautifully and my mouthpiece is a Dennis Wick mouthpiece. It's a 3FL, which is like medium <laughs> because I didn't want to like, um, you know, get the deepest of the deep. And I also have like, no way am I going to play on a shallow mouthpiece and sound good. So I think you're like medium is always a good bet. <laughs> and I, I'm super happy with it. I'm super happy with how this instrument sounds and how I sound on it. Now that I've been practicing trumpet so much, I can feel even more at home on what I consider to be my real instrument. Let's do some triple tonguing. <laughs> about how to organize my practice in an efficient way and in a way that helps me keep track and make sure that I practice everything I'm supposed to practice. So I wrote a little bit of a uh, routine for myself, which is a very basic template, right? I just start with mouthpiece buzzing and I do some Schlossberg and I just, I didn't write any specific Schlossberg, just whatever feels like something that I'm supposed to do that day. I practice a scale in the scale section for 10 minutes and I just click it up in the metronome one at a time, like super slow progress. You know, there's no rush. There's no rush to get fast. Then I have art of phrasing. It's like my uh, musical candy. <laughs> Triple tonguing, just because it's still something that I'm wanting to work on. My teacher told me I don't have to practice that much each day, but I should at least practice it for like a minute a day. Like 
maybe one time through an exercise per day. Um, after triple tonguing, I have Bordoni, which is a transposition, and then Charlier. So let's get to the Bordoni. Let's talk a little bit about what the Bordoni actually is. What do we use this book for? So basically it is a book for practicing transposition, which is an essential skill for trumpet players and you know, horn players, other kinds of instruments, sometimes clarinet. I've seen clarinet parts in C before. Um, but trumpets, especially because of the history of brass instruments, they have to transpose a lot. What is interesting about this book is that it goes immediately, like it starts, for example, this piece I'm working on starts in E flat. So I'm a B flat instrument transposing to E flat and then goes immediately to B flat. So then I transpose um, into concert B flat, which is my comfort zone, you know, as a B flat instrument player right now. Um, then it goes again into E flat then into F and then E flat. So I'm switching gears a lot, switching mental gears a lot. Let's, let's try it. <laughs> I practiced until um, the second transposition to E flat. I think if I try to play this whole thing at once, my brain will fall apart. <laughs> teacher wanted me to continue on the first one or start on the second one probably start on the second one but I'm, I'm kind of just working on both uh, but I also realized that like two hours have passed by since I started practicing um, and I really haven't taken that many breaks so I think I am going to say goodbye to you for now and maybe I'll eat some dinner and then maybe come back to this at another time today if not well, you will not know because the video will conclude. I hope that you enjoyed my practice today and I will see you next time. Stay mindful, stay musical, and stay out of trouble. <laughs>